As many of you may be aware of, a new Medal of Honor game was recently released in October of 2010, intended to be a successful reboot of the franchise and build as, quote-unquote, the most authentic shooter around. Yeah, we all know how that turned out. Okay, okay, it wasn't that bad a game, but for what it was billed as, it most certainly did not deliver. And at the end of the day, it wasn't a very good game either. Though, it does have a one-up on Bad Company 2, i.e. the ability to literally purchase every gun in the multiplayer in the online store. For just $10, you can instantly have an arsenal that'll automatically put you on even terms with all those gamers that have no life and just sit there playing the game 24-7. That's the main reason why I stopped playing Bad Company 2. I kept getting spawn sniped from across the map because the game had no level balancing system, and thus I kept getting put into games with the level 28 M95 crazies. But I digress, that's not what I'm here to talk about. What I am here to talk about is that certain little extra that was included with the PS3 version of the game. You see, Sony was able to secure an exclusive deal with EA that granted them a quote-unquote digitally remastered version of the classic Medal of Honor Frontline, and that right there was pretty much the sole reason for me picking this game up. So after a 4 gigabyte hard drive install, and the requirement of having the Medal of Honor disc in the PS3 to play this game, despite such a large hard drive install, how does this almost 9-year-old game stack up? Well, to be fair, Medal of Honor Frontline is still a fantastic game, and still manages to be better than 90% of the games that are haphazardly tossed onto the market today. I remember playing this as a kid, and there was always one mission that kept me coming back to this game. I've been down by fire from that bunker! If you can give me some cover fire in the bunker window, I can make a run for the signal! Ready where you are! Just to let you know, that audio was not enhanced for the PlayStation 3. That was the PlayStation 2 audio that you just heard. Good stuff, isn't it? If someone were to throw in a 7.1 surround sound function, this game would be on par with nearly all modern shooters audio-wise, and this was 2002 no less. The mission variety was great, the game was very challenging, but equally rewarding at the same time, and overall, it was just a superb quality product in many ways. However, it does have a few flaws in it that have prevented it from successfully withstanding the test of time. Flaws that have not been addressed in this so-called remastered version. First off, the aiming mechanics are terrible by today's standards. You see, this was back when most console first-person shooters did not have competent aiming mechanics, and PC still had a clear advantage over them. While there were a few that could compete somewhat, most could not, and the end result were aiming mechanics that required a lot of strafe aiming to compensate. Frontline was, and still is, one such game. In short, the sensitivity is far too high, and there's no way to turn it down. A new control scheme has been implemented, cleverly titled Modern, which is actually quite different from most console FPS control schemes, and it's strangely the only scheme that allows you to aim down the iron sights with all your weapons. None of the other schemes which are actually far superior in terms of function placement have this ability. Still, at the end of the day, the modern control scheme isn't that bad once you get used to it, and the aiming down the sights mechanic does give a greater degree of control in terms of aiming, but even at this, there's still no perfect balance. Aiming is either too quick or too slow, just when you need it the most, and could cost you a good chunk of health in intense gunfights. Secondly, don't play this game with an HDMI cable unless you feel like turning up the brightness on your TV. This so-called remastering is hardly a remastering at all. The only real difference between the PS2 and PS3 versions was the amount of color in the visuals, namely the dark shades, and in the PS3 version, it's simply overkill. When playing with an HDMI cable, the oversaturation of color makes it damn near impossible to see anything when playing a nighttime mission. And considering this was back in the era where the enemy AI could spot you a mile away, as well as hit you with pinpoint accuracy, this could, and probably will, inevitably lead to numerous cheap deaths for inexperienced first-person shooter players. My recommendation? Use component cables. However, despite what I just said, don't let that deter you from checking this game out. The two flaws I just mentioned can hamper the experience somewhat, but are by no means game-killing flaws. They're just two elements that I described at length, which I feel were not properly addressed in this rather poor conversion 
of what is otherwise still a fantastic game.